Welcome to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, a real estate investment program. Listen and learn how to use real estate to build wealth and passive income streams for you and your family. We bring you experts every day to discuss and answer your questions on everything from single family homes all the way up to 600 plus unit apartment complexes. And now, the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, where, as always, we're working on your financial freedom. My name is Mike Harrison. It's my privilege to be joining you today, and I want to thank you for tuning in. I have a great show planned today. If you caught my show last week, I teased it a bit. But essentially, we're going to discuss the multifamily market, what the drivers were in 2021 and how that affected the overall multifamily investment market. And then the second half of the show, I hope you can stick with us, we're going to do an outlook dive into 2022 and discuss some of the drivers of 2022 and what we're seeing now and what we expect to see throughout the year, again, in multifamily investment and from a national standpoint. Now, naturally, there are markets across this country that are much better to invest in than others. It doesn't mean you cannot find a deal wherever you are. It just, the economic dynamics and, quite frankly, politics in some places, hinders and discourages investments. This show is meant to be a continuation of a previous show from a few weeks back. That show aired on February 14th. If you missed it, you're going to want to go back and catch it because it's going to kind of fill in the prelude to what we're talking about today. Uh, The name of that show is Signs of Growth Dynamics of the Houston Real Estate Market. So that's more of a drill-down level, whereas today's discussion is going to be more of a national level, and you can find that at the Lifestyles Unlimited website, lifestylesunlimited.com. Just click on the radio button, scroll all the way down, bottom right-hand corner, there'll be a search box. Type in Mike Harrison, and you'll you'll find that show there. Now, my guest on that show three weeks ago is my friend David, who's a lead investor in the Houston market, at least in at Lifestyles Unlimited, we use the term lead investor. For those of you that are not Lifestyles Unlimited members, syndicator is what David is. He's a syndicator. He buys apartment communities with passive investors, takes those down, and then changes the dynamics of the business, makes a great, um, improves the business, and, and creates a great yield for us. Multifamily is a hot market right now, and in my opinion, is the best place to invest in in real estate if you're seeking yield. This is the space to be in. 2021 was fantastic. I expect 2022 to be just as good, if not better, regardless of inflation, regardless of gasoline prices. Don't get trapped in that noise. If you get trapped in that noise, you would have done nothing in 2021, and you'll be scared to death to invest in 2022. And I'm telling you, that's going to be a mistake. Now, our discussion today is going to revolve around an article that came out in Forbes December 30th, 2021. If you want to go back and check it out yourself, the title of that article is A 2021 Multifamily Apartment Recap and 2022 Outlook. It's by a gentleman by the name of Craig Berger. If I'm saying his name right, Craig, I I sure hope I am. And we're going to go through this article. We're going to look at some of the points But we're also going to look at them in light of our strategies with Lifestyles Unlimited. And not all the points necessarily apply to us in areas where, for the most part, they do. But they don't totally apply to us. And I think you'll see as as we get into the show. So, David, I really appreciate you joining me again on on short notice. How are you doing? Hey, my pleasure, Mike. Happy to be here. It's always a good time. I uh, I listen to your show, and so it, it's pretty fun to get to be on it here. <laughs> it, <laughs> Happy to it, do it. it. It's a blast. I love it, and I'll tell anyone that asks me. I get more out of it than our our listeners. Um, honestly, it it keeps me in tune with real estate investing. So, David, quickly, if anyone missed our show from February fourteenth, why don't you give us the uh, the two-minute elevator pitch on on your background and, and who you are and what you do. 
Sure, sure. So, uh, again, my name is David. Prior to becoming a Lifestyles member, I was an entrepreneur, grew up in an entrepreneurial family. My wife was a, a public school kindergarten teacher. And uh, we were just looking for something else on the on the retirement front. Um, it, well, our game plan didn't really seem to be uh, heading in the direction that we wanted to go. So, uh, came across lifestyles, and and since then, since learning how to do uh, what we talked about a lot about uh, on that show was um, not all real estate, it, quote unquote, investing is correct real estate investing. Uh, that. All lifestyles, or excuse me, all real estate investing does not follow the uh, lifestyles Dell's three rules of investing. Um, That's true. So with that, um, since learning the correct model, we've invested in uh, single-family homes. We we owned a small apartment community just ourselves, just my wife and I, uh, and then have been blessed over the last uh, couple of years to be a syndicator, a lead investor, like you said, working with uh, great Lifestyles Unlimited members all over the country, all over the state, uh, really all over the world. We've got a few out of the country as well. And it's just been a, been a great time. We've uh, we've been in a fortunate position to be getting phenomenal returns ourselves and, and being able to deliver those to other investors as well. And then in the process, uh, obviously have learned a lot about those markets. Uh, and so what, our conversation a couple of weeks ago was primarily around some of the drivers of the Houston economy. We have job growth, we have population growth, uh, and now with oil uh, prices going up, every there is every trend that that is probably going to continue. As crazy as it was two and a half weeks ago, three weeks ago, whenever we had that conversation, I think oil was about $80 a barrel. Today, right. it's over 110 uh, in three weeks. That's just crazy. And if and we stop buying nothing from... nothing but uh, good. <laughs> Yeah, and, and if we do the right thing and stop buying from Russia, you'll see 150, if not higher. Right. But uh, that's a conversation at a different level, obviously. So, sure. David, let's start off. We've got about a minute with some key trends uh, from 2021 multifamily market. I guess we can cap this article uh, for 2021. Is, is the sentence they use is cap rate compression and inflation driven rent hikes. And, and actually, we didn't have as much time as I thought we did. David, we're going to pick that up on the other side and, and talk about the 2021 multifamily market and the metrics of such. My name is Mike Harrison. This is the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Now, let's get back to your map to financial freedom. Welcome back to the show. My name is Mike Harrison. If you have any questions about real estate investing, about Lifestyles Unlimited, about how to get started, really anything at all, please send me an email. And I do enjoy getting emails from our listeners and respond to each one personally. My email address is askmike at l-u-i-n-c dot com. Askmike at l-u-i-n-c dot com. I have my friend David on the show today. David is a syndicator, or as we call it at Lifestyles Unlimited, a lead investor, which means he purchases apartment communities with the help of passive investors, people like myself. They go by these businesses that... Uh, let's just say, needs some help, David fixes them and provides a great return for himself and his investors. So I brought David on the show today to talk about what happened in 2021 as a multifamily uh, in that space, essentially what made it such a great investment, uh, what were the dynamics behind it, and then we're going to finish the show with what we see for 2022. So David, um, first point I want to make is we had cap rate compression in 2021, largely due to COVID-driven interest rate declines and increased rental rates. What did that mean for apartment values last year? What did you see personally? Yeah, so, uh, you know, for most of our listeners, of course, aren't super comfortable with commercial real estate terminology like me and you are. So yeah. your cap Good rates point. ultimately are, are, are a big 
they're the driver of, of value for uh, certainly apartment communities, but really all commercial real estate as well, right? It's a multiplier of, of the income of the property is really what it comes down to. Um, so sorry, I just want to give like a 30 no, second background on great that. Great job, yeah. Um, um, and so really with that, as, as a cap rate gets smaller, what that means is the multiple that someone is willing to pay for that same income that the property is producing is increasing, right? So people are willing to pay more money for the same property. Um, and so this article, I believe it alluded to it, uh, really across the board, all across the country, um, they were seeing, I think they said the average was between 15 and 30% value increase. So cap rate compression producing a value increase in those multifamily properties. So what we found uh, in our own properties and certainly uh, uh, both just my other friends within the lifestyles community, um, we saw just phenomenal value increases on all of these apartment communities that we're all investing in. Um, and then, so that's the one dynamic is, is the, the multiple that people are willing to pay for that was going up. Well, yeah. simultaneously, the actual income of the property was going up at the same time. So, uh, you know, both if we're looking at the math equation, both sides of the multiplier were going up. So the property is making more money. And then at the same time, if you were looking to sell it or you're looking to refinance it, uh, the multiple that you're getting on that increasing income is also increasing. So it was typically a phenomenal it, year. <laughs> at, it, just unbelievable. And typically you don't see both of those metrics rising in coordination with one another. And that's exactly what happened in, in 2021. Massive increases in value because of that cap rate compression. The, the demand, let's say, the demand for the apartment communities, the fact that there's more investors and uh, more money pouring into that segment is just, it's driving those caps straight down. The other thing we saw, no. David, in, in 2021 versus 2020, let's just call it COVID-19 impacts in 2021 were much less than they were in 2020. And I don't know if it's, um, you know, if you take the rent relief, if if the, they got their act together and that seemed smoother, the eviction moratorium started to go away. W- what did you see on your end? Yeah, it, it's really uh, all of that, um, you know, combined with even just as rent relief, you know, existed and then be, then even began to dry up. Um, beyond that, people were just con- more consistently getting back to work, right? People who um, worked 40 hours a week and then maybe throughout parts of COVID, it might have dropped to, you know, 15, 10, 15, 20 hours a week. Um, they were going back to work, Um at closer to those full time hours as well, um, as we've seen, I know it's it's you know it's on the news, it's in the public consciousness all the time right now. Uh, with the labor shortage, um, those who want to work and are working or have have a job are getting back to work. And so, with that, that is that was a huge win out of 2021. Is I think overall the it seemed that all of the individual properties and then the the economy overall as well recovered, I think, better and faster than most of us expected, uh, which is always a pleasant surprise. <laughs> it, it sure was. And we're, we're looking at this nationally, but to drill it down to where we are within the state of Texas, we really didn't shut down for the most part. And uh, we weren't as affected as much as some of the other markets across the country um, bottom line there. I mean, yeah, there was here and there, there was little pockets, but for the most part, we were able to sail right through it. And then 2021 to me was much better than 2020. No, oh, that's right. That's right. And then uh, primarily uh, within lifestyles, we support workforce housing, right? So we are not, we're not on average anyway, there's some exceptions, but on average anyway, we're not providing uh, super high end, uh, you know, class A++ type property. We aren't renting properties at, you know, $3,000 a month rent like they are in some other areas. Um, but right. workforce housing, so a lot of uh, a lot of hourly employees and or just people early in their career, um, we saw them between, of course, stimulus packages as well, and then also just getting back to work in their good, livable, wage-paying jobs. Thankfully, we, we saw properties perform extremely, extremely well throughout that 
entire time. That's better than we point. expected again. That's an excellent point, and it turns out that by owning the Class B and Class C property, essentially it turns out our residents were, quote-unquote, the essential workers. They were the construction folks. They were the truck drivers. They were the people uh, getting the groceries to the market. And so a lot of our residents didn't get hit as hard as the, the Class A. They weren't the essential workers. They were laying off them the marketing people, the accounting people, a lot of the white collar, essentially in an odd way, they took it harder than the blue collar worker. No, that's absolutely true. And there's still plenty of jobs out there. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of space for this to grow. We're not even near the top, in my opinion, in regards to where we are with labor, where we are with the economy. There's plenty of fuel in the tank, I guess. Let me say that. No, that's right. And it, it'll be interesting to see, but I, I think uh, kind of to the theme of our radio show a couple of weeks ago, I think we are in for a phenomenal another year or two on the multifamily side. And I'm sure there are some people who are wondering, you know, this has been, it's been great for a long time. Can it continue to be great? And just like you mentioned to, you alluded to earlier, Mike, I remember when my wife and I, we bought our first uh, just individually owned apartment in 2014. We were saying exactly the same thing. Can it really just keep getting good? Can it stay good for the next however long? Can it continue? And we're going to talk about that toward the end of the show because a lot of the dynamics that made 2021 great are persisting through 2022. My name is Mike Harrison. This is the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Listening to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show will change your life. We will teach you how to create wealth and passive income so you can be financially free. And now, back to your host. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, where, as always, we're working on your financial freedom. My name is Mike Harrison. I appreciate you tuning in today. And today we're doing a recap of the 2021 multifamily market and we're going to get to our outlook on the 2022 multifamily market so you want to stick around and uh, listen for the entirety of the show i've got my friend david on the show david's a multifamily lead investor out of houston texas so he's pretty much on the front lines of multifamily property purchasing investing managing the property running the property making the business better and providing a great return for his investor. So, David, when we left off, we were essentially talking about some of the, uh, let's call it uh, the COVID-19 protocols that had an impact on, quite frankly, mom-and-pop owners more than it did Lifestyles Unlimited owners. And and we we have a lot of education here at Lifestyles. We utilize a lot of the best practices, and and I think one of our greatest strategies is best product, best price. And, and what does that mean? That essentially means the best managed property, the best run property, a maintenance staff that cares, that gets the job done, a manager that cares about the people, um, great amenities at the property. Frankly, our residents don't want to leave our properties. So, David, I want to speak to how a Lifestyles Unlimited lead investor utilizing that best product, best price how did how do you, I think that literally mitigated some of the issues that other owners had? Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, several. I think what you mentioned, and it was really I saw some statistics on it uh, just a bit ago as well, is that one of the huge impacts of COVID again that I, I would I don't think anybody necessarily would have predicted in advance uh, was that turnover was extremely low. Um, yes. So residents were very disinclined to begin looking for another place. Um, so nearly without exception, uh, pro- properties, assuming, again, all of the assumptions you made, right, it's, it's a well-run property, it's a well-executed property, we're, we're following the best product, best price model, providing a great place to live for our residents. Uh, in very rare cases, 
was anyone wanting to move out uh, over the last 18 months or so. As a matter of fact, one of our properties, we sort of planned on a 35%, 40% turnover rate, uh, and we've really only had about a 10% <laughs> turnover rate. Wow. But in the midst of that, exactly like you're saying, uh, our residents are happy. They love living there. Um, yes. So we're still getting some phenomenal rent growth. Um, but at the same time, we aren't turning the units uh, because the residents don't want to move out. And so it's, right. it's really just been an, an incredible thing for apartment operators who, again, doing it correctly, providing a great place to live, taking care of their residents, working with them throughout the last year or so uh, with those rent relief programs, things like that, trying to trying to do whatever they could to help those folks continue to have a great place to live, but then also to take care of our properties and our investors in the process. It, it, we really just saw an unprecedented level of people stay put and not want to move to a new property. Yes. They wanted to stay in our properties and y- you hit on something. A lot of our managers, a lot of our owners, our leads push this, but we were providing all kinds of assistance to the residents. We were literally saying, if you need help, reach out to us. And we were helping people with their paperwork so that they can get rental assistance. We were hosting job fairs on our property. We were helping people if they did get laid off. Uh, we Here's jobs here. Here's jobs here. Here's jobs here. And they were feeding them to the residents. So they were helping the residents stay employed. They were helping the residents get their rent covered. They were helping their residents with assistance. It's pretty incredible some of the ideas that our lead investors come up with um, they're just thinking outside the box, but it's it's all about that service to the resident, um, provide a great place to live, and then help them through it. That's how you run a great business. That's right. And beyond that, I think one thing that I, frankly, did not even value enough when I became a Lifestyles Unlimited member uh, and lead investor, one thing that I did not see the value of is how much and how powerful that network of other like-minded investors and other lead investors and other apartment operators, uh, how beneficial that is, that brain trust that we can draw from uh, when those types of things happen is so powerful. Uh, I know all throughout the pandemic, there were meetings and emails and Zoom meetings and everything else going, hey, I tried this at my property. It seems to be working great for residents. Oh, that's a great idea. Let me try that at my property. It was so beneficial. And I think Lifestyles Unlimited and, and the team here and all the members really shone brightly over the last two years. That's what makes us unique as a group. We believe in the abundance mentality. We believe that a rising tide lifts all boats. We're not trying to, if, if one of us comes up with a great idea to utilize in our business, we're not trying to hide that from everybody else. We're not in competition with one another, even though a lot of times we own apartment communities next to other lead investors from Lifestyles. We're growing the entire thing together, and that, that really is what sets us apart. Great point, Dave, and I'm glad you mentioned that. Let's get to the last point of 2021 that I want to make. And within this article in Forbes, they said, Rental rate growth of 10 to 20% is working through the rent roll, spurred by Federal Reserve actions driving dollar value destruction. Essentially, the more money they print, that's the classic term of inflation, is uh, a growth of the money supply. Rent's got to go up because the more they print that, these other increases, insurance, labor rates, maintenance, energy, Every cost to manage and run the business goes up. Therefore, rent goes up. What kind of rent growth did you see in 2021, and did you get much pushback, David? So we have seen across our portfolio uh, an average of 15%. Uh, and that is, that's really not even a, a true number. And what I mean by that is uh, that 15% is largely on existing residents. Uh, So, again, to our last point, uh, because so many of those residents stayed stayed in place, we're seeing significant rent increases just on the current residents because they they don't want to move. They like where they live. Uh, And so factored into that, you know, the the handful of units we were able to turn over, in some cases, we're seeing as much as 25 percent increase in rents on those units. 
And so as that continues, the, the, the way the article phrased it, as that continues to kind of work through the rent roll, uh, you know, over as old leases fall off and, and new leases come on board over the next six months, uh, we're going to really see that trickle down to the bottom line financials on all of these properties. David, correct me if I'm wrong. So you've seen 15% across the board in one year. And when I look at pro formas as a passive and I'm, I'm looking at a potential investment that I want to jump into, correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't, aren't we planning on 2 and 3% <laughs> annual year? Is, is that the number? Am I right? No, that's right. That's right. That, I mean, that's certainly what I've, I've found myself and, and we did on our own performance uh, and others as well. So we, we tend to be extremely conservative in our underwriting on these properties. Um, but then once you get into them, uh, there's, there's so much opportunity. Uh, there's so many ways you can make a property nicer to live in. You can make a, an apartment in an individual unit a nicer place to be. There's so many ways you can improve that that people are happy to pay for a nicer place to live. And so, but you're right. We just can't factor that in because it, it, no one's going to give you a pro forma that shows a, a no. 10 or a 20 or a 30% rent increase. <laughs> that would look crazy until you see the backstory in the plan. Uh, and, but sometimes you just have to do it and see it happen. <laughs> that That's phenomenal. And I just want to reiterate, so we plan for a 2 or 3% year-over-year increase we got a 15 to 20, which is literally a 50 to 100% greater than pro forma. No wonder 2021 was such a great year. My name is Mike Harrison. We'll be right back. This is the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. It's time to turn up the volume and fine-tune your passive income plan so you can create the lifestyle you've always wanted. Welcome back to the show. My name is Mike Harrison. Throw my email address out one more time if you've got any questions about real estate investing, about multifamily investing specifically, what we're talking about today. About Lifestyles Unlimited, anything at all, please send me an email, askmike at luinc.com. Askmike at luinc.com. And Mike is spelled M I K E. Now, before we get back to this discussion on multifamily, uh, what we see ahead for 2022, our Multifamily Masters Expo is coming up next week. It's March 17th. 18th and 19th in 2022, Houston, Texas, George R. Brown Convention Center. Make plans to attend now. If you haven't already, it is not too late. There are still tickets. I believe the the Masters Tour may be sold out, but the Expo is definitely wide open. The Expo's two days. Uh, there will be 6,000 investors, single-family and multifamily investors there. Our lead investors will be there. We will have breakout classes, networking events. Make plans now. If you haven't already, you should. If you're considering investing in real estate, this is the place to be. If you are dabbling in real estate investing, this is the place to be. If you feel like you're not as effective as you should be, this is the place to be. The Lifestyles Unlimited Wealth and Passive Income Expo and Multifamily Master Store, although I think the, the Master Store may be sold out. But you can check that online if you go to Lifestyles Unlimited Expo 2022 or go to Wealth and Passive Income Expo.com. David, all right, we kicked 2021 around. What a great year for a lot of different dynamics as far as multifamily investing. Let's take a look at the 2022 multifamily outlook, and I think we can sum this up with more rental rate growth ahead, um, and there are several trends. Are you seeing anything that's, that's going to stop the trend of, of rent growth? 
Certainly not in our area. I, I can't speak for you know the entire country, but at least in Texas and Houston, where we are, as a as a percentage of uh, these uh, residents' income, uh, rent is still so low. We've got a lot of room to continue to improve these properties, give them an even better place to live, and then get the corresponding rent growth as well. I don't see anything on the horizon at all that is going to impact that, at least for the next few years. I see no change in the fundamental trends. Um, they're going to stay strong or, or even improve. Uh, there's always going to be a demand for workforce housing. Um, folks are starting to realize we're going to live with COVID-19 for the rest of our life. So... Hopefully, knock on wood, I, I don't think we'll see any more eviction moratoriums or, or anything like that. And we should just be able to cruise through. But I expect multifamily top line performance to be robust in, in 2022. Now, let's talk about inflation and, and not necessarily inflation from the standpoint of essentially all of our pocketbooks. We have a little less because food and this and that are going up. But I want to talk about inflation in regards to managing and running an apartment business, what are you seeing? And uh, you know all the expenses. You're you're the lead investor. This is this is your business. What are you seeing? Yeah. So certainly, uh, that's it, it's always present. It's really just a bit exaggerated uh, in the last year or two. <laughs> certainly, all the, all the big numbers. Of course, we all know we're used to it. Property taxes go up every year. Insurance goes up every year. With Texas having a handful of freezes over the last few years that caused some caused some damage, caused some insurance carriers to take some losses, uh, we're certainly seeing a lot of growth on the insurance policy cost side of things as well. Um, so that it continues to to be a factor, um, I, and I would say beyond that, as much as anything, uh, specifically as it relates to COVID, and hopefully this part continues to loosen up. Uh, really, a big part of the the. I wouldn't even say issue. Just the, one of the one of the various factors we're contending with is the supply chain issues, uh, which is, of course, yeah. it's related to inflation. They go together sometimes. So, for instance, on something like appliances, you know, if we've got a new resident moving in and we're replacing the old appliances, um, if, if they're moving in in three days, we might have to pay a little bit more to find something that's in stock. Because yeah. a lot of things aren't, <laughs> so we're going to have to pay a little bit more to get something that's actually available, versus uh, you know the less expensive option, but it's not going to be here for six weeks. So Are it's you... always better in that case, obviously, pay a little more and uh, and put the resident in that wants it. So um, that's that's a lot of the inflation we're seeing as well is just doing what's necessary to overcome those supply chain challenges. You know, now that you mention it, um, that makes sense. I saw something the other day that garage doors, of all things, builders are, it's taken them seven and eight months sometimes to get garage doors. And then you mentioned the appliances. So I take it that as a lead, you're wanting to put the same oven in, the same microwave in. Um, so you have repetitory brand repetition of type, I guess, for your maintenance guys. Are you haven't actually changed some brands and types? Is that what you're saying? Yes, we are for sure. That that is definitely the the ideal scenario. Is we we make everything the same, kind of follow that that Southwest Airlines model, right? One one plane, uh, one set of uh, one set of parts, and you're good to go. Uh, we were trying to trying to do some of the same with our appliances uh, on our properties, but yeah, that reality that we were just talking about is sometimes you just gotta take what's available regardless of, of your preferred brand because somebody wants the unit but they don't want to move in with uh without a place to cook or somewhere to keep their their food cold <laughs> no it makes total sense if you're spending a little more get the oven in there get the unit ready to go get the resident in and just deal with it as you go i mean obviously you're not going down in quality you've got a certain level that you're trying to keep these units at so if anything i'm guessing you're spending more and getting something nicer no that's right that's right and that's one of the benefits of course of, of the all new anyway is it, everything's under a manufacturer's warranty but we have seen and, and it really surprised me is it's one of the biggest value adds in our types of properties and in our for our residents is just replacing 
appliances that aren't working great. And it's it's amazing to me that that's not a common thing, right? It's common within lifestyles because of the best product, best price model. Best product, uh, best price, but, baby. Replace the AC, but, replace the appliances, replace the countertops, the flooring, make it a great place to live for a great family, and, and they'll reward you and they'll stay and they'll appreciate the property. So, yes, that's, yeah, uh, no, that's right. another way that comes in. All right, David, uh, here's the big one. Um, they're predicting slightly higher interest rates and more normalized net income trend should cause cap rates to rise modestly. And we've talked back and forth about this. My personal opinion is maybe, but that would be in the long term. I still see, because of the demand, cap rate compression, even with higher interest rates. And I know that's counterintuitive. If you're listening to me now, you're thinking, oh, a higher interest rate uh, is going to increase that cap rate. And maybe not here, not in the top markets. What do you think about that, David? You know, I would tend to agree with you. And I think it is an uncommon uh, position in a sense that uh, the common the common thought, I guess, or the common wisdom is, uh, you know, cap rates follow interest rates. So if interest rates go up, cap rates are going to expand a bit. And maybe I would say in a normal in a normal world, but we're not in a normal world, right? The Fed has printed so much money that there's just an enormous amount of capital all over the place looking for returns. And right. for all the reasons that we talked about last time we spoke, Texas is one of the very best places you could put that capital to work. So with the influx of so much money looking for some return, um, I, I would be shocked if in cap rates increase here locally. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't make the same bet necessarily for the entire country, anywhere in the country, but for Texas and the major metros in Texas, I, I think we're going to be flat if not continued to see continued value increases of the properties or cap rate compression. I think you'll see it not only in Texas, but to markets like Phoenix, Nashville, Atlanta, some of these others, uh, Indianapolis. There's just not enough housing out there, workforce housing. And then, David, what do you know about the the foreign money that's pouring in and buying multifamily assets as well? Oh, my goodness. It's it's incredible. I've heard from three different brokers this week. Uh, that they've been approached by large outside groups, some foreign, some just Wall Street firms, et cetera, that just said, find me something to buy, and I don't even really care what the return is because I need to put this money to work. We've got so much cash, we need to deploy it. And so what we're finding with that, you know, as as individual investors for our, for ourselves, our families, our groups of investors, is that we might see our yields go down just a little bit because – all these properties are getting bid up. We're all paying more money for the properties. But the reality is, you know, a, a three or four or five percent yield is phenomenal compared to zero anywhere else. Yes, it is. Well, David, that was quick. I really appreciate you taking the time to share your knowledge with us today. For those of you listening out there, I want you to do something today. Your future self will thank you for. And always remember, it's not the money. It's the lifestyle. See you next week and make it a great day. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show constitutes an endorsement recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.